Hello friends, good morning, good afternoon and good evening. So in this part five of performance tuning, we will learn about uh, load balancing in WebLogic server. I had a discussion with a lot of engineers about the load balancing specifically in WebLogic, okay? And uh, most of them, they were confused about the load balancing when we talk about the different kind of sessions and different kind of requests that has been received by the WebLogic server. Okay, like for example, there we have the HTTP request and then we have the RMA request as well. And then many of the engineers are not very sure what exactly is RMI. So they are aware about the HTTP request, okay, but they are confused about the RMI and how does RMI kind of a request get low load balance in our web logic, specifically when we use different web servers in front of uh, web logic. And then apart from that, we use the cluster in the web logic as well. So what exactly happening there? We are using the web server as a load balancer. It is uh, doing the load balancing of the applications. And again, inside the web server, we have the cluster, web logic server, we have the cluster as well. So is it mean that we are doing the load balancing at two level or what is the difference of the load balancing at web server level and the load balancing at cluster level? Okay, so I will clear all of your doubt in this session, in this short session, okay? What is the difference between uh, HTTP load balancing and, and the cluster load balancing, specifically to RMI uh, calls, okay? And then I will give you some concept of, of uh, this different kind of a request as well. So let us move forward. So this is a basic flow of the request, okay? When we talk about, we have a web logic in the back end, okay? In a highly available architecture. And then when a user access the, uh, the website, which is, or uh, the URL which is deployed in your uh, application server, specifically when we talk about the WebLogic server, okay? And then you have a web server in front of your application server, so request will go to your web server via load balancer and maybe in between you have a firewall as well, okay? So load balancer, it is a different load balancer apart from web server, which is called a hardware load balancer. It has different capabilities in terms of the request or the sessions, okay, for to get a, a clear understanding on this uh, hardware load balancer, you can see my other sessions on WebLogic server architecture one, two, three, and four part. Okay, but as of now, you can consider it as an, a load balancer, which is sending the request to your web servers. Okay, and then web servers are configured to forward the request to your backend application server, which is WebLogic server in our case, right? And then you have a database in the backend, right? But apart from that one, the request that we get from the browser from a user, it is a HTTP request because it is uh, it is hit by the browser. That means the user is accessing a website with the help of browser, and then it is coming to your web server. Okay, and this is a HTTP request. But what apart from other that that lot of applications are also there, right? A lot of uh, Java applications are also there, or maybe the Java clients are there. They are, they are, they are directly invoking your applications in the web logic server, right? So that 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 they are not going to the HTTP call. That means they are not using the browser. When we talk about it is an application, okay? So any applications or clients are not going to use their browser, okay? They can directly call to your WebLogic server for the different kind of executions of your code objects or the method which is deployed in your WebLogic server business logic. Okay, so when you are accessing a website or you're accessing a URL with the help of browser, right? This is a HTTP call. And when any client, any thin client or thick client, okay, and uh, maybe some other applications, okay, maybe because there is in an enterprise world, we have a lot of integrations as well, where one application is calling to other applications directly, right? So in that scenario, it would be a RMI method call, which is called remote method invocation, okay? So we have a two type of call in web logic. We can say about one is the HTTP call, which we are uh, uh, getting from the web browser, and second, which, which we are directly getting from the applications. Now let us see about the different component of Java, okay? Because it is very important to understand this concept, okay? When we talk about the HTTP call and then when we talk about the RMI calls and then we go for the load balancing of HTTP calls and RMI calls, okay? It is very important to understand two components of or, or two categories of Java, okay? It is divided into two parts or you can say two groups. One is called a web component. Second is called the EJB components, which is also called a business logic. So what happens is that you have, if all the web components, okay, for example, you have a HTML pages, you have a static images, static videos, static audios, and then apart from that, we have some kind of a static contents, okay, apart from that, and all those contents, okay, including your servlet and GSP as well, which work dynamically at the runtime to, to connect with the database and to get the data from the database, okay. So, so if you have such kind of a content, then you can use a web server. So that is called a web component because it is handled by the web server. 
But when we talk about the advanced Java, specifically EJB component, enterprise Java base, which is developed in the advanced Java, okay? So execution of your EJB component, which is developed in the advanced Java is, is the capability of application server. Your, your, your uh, web server is not able to handle that, uh, such kind of a request, which is developed in advanced Java, for example, as enterprise Java beans, or we can say about the EJB component, right? So for execution of the web component, you need a web server and to execution of your business logic, which is developed in the advanced Java, right? You need an application server, right? So when we talk about the web logic server, so it has a capability of your web server as well as application server. That means it has an inbuilt web server, <clears throat> sorry, inbuilt web server as well. So, and, and that is the reason we deploy a lot of war files as, as well as ER files in the web logic server. Why we are deploying the war file? Because it has a capability of a uh, web server as well. So the page pages or your website can be accessed from the web logic as well because it has a web server as well. And when we, it comes to the execution of your business logic, right? Then it is handled by the application server part. So that means there are two components, web component and EJB components, right? So web components are executed in the servlet container, which is also called a web container. So that means a web server has a servlet container, which also called a web container, which execute the web component, right? And when we talk about the EJB components, which is developed in advanced Java, enterprise Java beans, for that you need an EJB container and your web server doesn't have this EJB container and that's why you need the application server, right? So for web components, you need a web server because a web server contain a servlet container or a web container, which can execute the web component. But when we talk about the advanced Java code or a bit to execute the business logic, you need a EJB container, which is only possible in the application server. Now, what is a web server? So a web server is a software that helps to deliver web content, or you can say web pages to the client's web browser through the internet using HTTP protocol. Now, this is the important point to understand the HTTP and RMI. So HTTP request that we are getting from the browser using a HTTP protocol, right? So it can be HTTP as well, which is another part of your HTTP as well for secure communication. But main thing is that you are accessing the application with the help of HTTP protocol, okay, and with the help of browser. And when we talk about JSPs and servlets, which also called the server-side technologies, right? Because it is executing in your uh, EJV servlet container, as I said in my previous slide, right? And it, so a servlet, it is a technology which is, used to develop web applications in Java. So servlets are just simple like a small Java code, right? That is used specifically designed for uh, building your web applications, okay? And the headings that you are seeing, JSPs and servlets, server technologies cannot be executed on a HTTP server, right? This is a bit wrong statement. It has to be, can be executed on a HTTP server. So make it, so correct it please. Uh, JSP, servlets, server side technologies can be executed on HTTP server, but cannot be executed on web logic server. I'm sorry, it can be executed on the web logic server as well because it has a capability of web server as well. But the statement would be that JSPs and servlet can be executed on HTTP server because that is the only capability of a web server to execute the servlets. And servlets are Java classes executed on the server side are used to generate, generate dynamic web pages, right? So servlets are uh, just like a small Java code that you design for a to get a certain kind of a dynamic functionalities, like to, to design a certain pages, which at the runtime can connect with your database and then fetch some data from the database and then show you on the website in the front of you. Okay, and to deploy and run JSP servlets are compatible web server with a servlet container required. So that means if you are going to use the JSP or servlets, for that you need a web server which will contain a web container or you can say about the servlet container for the execution of your JSPs and servlets. So this would be the, this would be the case in that case. A, a client is accessing the website which is deployed in your web server and inside the web server you have a servlet container, right? And this servlet container will execute your servlets or JSPs and then it will send requests back to you. So that means a web server contain a servlet container, which is also called a web container for the execution on JSPs and servlets, okay? And now when we talk about the application server, which is specifically designed for the execution of your business logic, okay? So a web container implemented JSPs and servlets specifications of Java Enterprise Edition. However, there are more specifications with Java, mainly the EJB specification. So JSPs and servlets also part of the Java because that is developed in Java, right? So, but the point is that if you are using the JSPs and servlets, then you can use web server, but if you need some more components of J2EE or Java Enterprise Edition, such like EJBs, 
for execution of your business logic, then servlet container would not be sufficient for that one. Okay, and for that you need a different capability that is called a your uh, servlet, uh, not servlet, but that is called your EJB container. Okay. And instead, you need a full application server and application server container, an EJB container, as well as servlet container and implements all the required specifications of Java. So this is nothing but the same that if you are going to execute your business logic, which is developed in your EJBs, then you need a EJB container, which is only possible in an application server. Okay, so these are the examples of application servers like Oracle Web Logic Server, IBM WebSphere Application Server, JBoss from Red Hat, and then you have an open source version of that as well available in market. This is called Wildfly. Okay, there are a lot of other application servers as well. Now, now we have two types of call in applications, right? One is the HTTP call, which we are getting from the web browser with the help of HTTP protocol, right? This is the flow for that one. And second is called the RMI. So RMI stands for remote method invocation. So as I said that in RMI, a client can directly call to the application or methods or objects that is deployed in your web logic server, right? That means it is a mechanism that allow an object residing in one JVM to access, invoke an object running on another JVM. So it is so when we talk about the RMI, it is a JVM to JVM call. That means a one application, that means your client application is running, which is a Java application, right? If it is a Java application, that means it is running on such certain JVM. Similarly, your destination application, which is running on WebLogic server, managed server, which is again running on your JVM, right? So your first application, source application calling the second application, which is deployed in your managed server in your logic. So it would be a JVM to JVM call. And that's why it is referred as JVM to JVM call. So it is not an HTTP call. One application is directly calling or invoking the method from a different application, which is running on a different JVM. So RMI is used to build distributed application. That means you have enterprise architecture. We have where you have multiple applications are scattered around the world and around with different customers in within your internal organization, within external organizations and they all are integrated and then they need a communication with each other, okay? And where specifically they are exchanging certain kind of documents, certain kind of data, right? And maybe one application is contacting the different application for execution of some business logic and where, and that's the area where RMI come in the picture, right? For a JVM to JVM call, okay? So it provides a remote communication between Java program. That means source application would be on different domain, target application could be on different domain. That means they are running on a different JVMs on different domains and one domain application is, is contacting different domain application for the execution of some business logic or maybe to get certain kind of a output from the business logic, okay? So this is the difference between HTTP and RMI call. And when we go for, and this is the example of even when we talk about one application is calling to another application, specifically in terms of a logic server, that means it is called via JNDI. Okay, so JNDI is a Java naming directory interface. This is designed when we, when we define a different kind of a resources in WebLogic server. So one application can connect with your uh, WebLogic server, okay, and with the help of JNDI, right? So one, when one application using the JNDI, contacting your WebLogic server and then invoking some method which is defined in a JVM, which is running on WebLogic server, it is a RMI call. It is a direct RMI call, right? So now comes to the point, if we are saying that we have to load balance the request in WebLogic server, right? Then you need a two different kind of a load balancing algorithms, or you can say you have to consider the two different cases. One, if you are going to load balance the web components, servlets and JSPs, HTML pages, Okay, and second, if you wanted to have a load balancing for your RMI objects or for the EJBs, right? So you have to consider two different cases. So now for the case one, for load balancing of your servlets and JSPs and HTML pages, you just need a web server in front of your application server where requests will be diverted from your web server to application server, okay, based on the on that algorithm that you have defined in your web server, which is round robbing by default in your uh, Apache or Oracle HTTP server. Okay, so this will load balance only the HTTP request. That means only the HTML pages, or if you have a certain kind of a web, web application which is deployed in your web logic server, which contain your servlets and JSPs, then all those applications will be load balance with the help of web server. But when we talk about the business logic which is deployed in your web managed server, so for that you have to go for a web logic cluster. Okay, so what does it mean? I will explain it here. So load balancing of EJBs and RMI objects, you can accomplish load balancing of EJB and RMI objects using application server cluster. That means the cluster that we defined in WebLogic server, okay, that cluster is for the load balancing of your RMI calls. It is not load balancing for your uh, HTTP calls. 
You're getting my point. What I'm saying is that we have two kinds of a request in WebLogic. One is your HTTP request, which is specifically for web content load balancing. Second is the load balancing of your RMI calls, which is a direct JVM to JVM call. Okay. So now when we talk about the web server, or when we talk about the web component, then you need a web server in front of your uh, uh, WebLogic server for load balancing of the web content request. But when we talk about the RMI request, that means all the code that we deploy in, in our WebLogic server, which is developed in the EJBs, Advanced Java, okay, that request or that code would be load balancing with the help of WebLogic cluster. For example, if I'm saying that you have two managed server in a cluster and you have deployed your application, which is developed in EJBs in your cluster, right? So if any client is connected to managed server one anytime, that means for JVM to JVM call via RMI. And in that, suppose that that server get crashed at the moment, the request of RMI will be get transferred to your second server in the cluster. Okay, but this WebLogic cluster, but the, the cluster that we defined in WebLogic, it is not for the load balancing of your web request. For web request, we are using the web server in front of our managed servers, okay? And this is the architecture of your web container and EJB container. So your web request will be handled by the web container of the application server. And for that, we are using the web server in front of our application server. But when it is an EJB container where you need an, where, where, where we have a RMI to RMI calls for that WebLogic server cluster in come in front of the picture. So words of wisdom, use a web server for web request, load balancing and cluster for load balancing the code, your business code. Okay. So thanks for watching this video and stay tuned for a few more interesting videos.